you again for coming to another RealTO community show. I'm Chris Detzel. I'm the director of our customer community and engagement. Uh, we have special guest and first timer uh, on our show is Sergio Abraham. Sergio, how are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good. And he's calling in from Barcelona, Spain. So that's pretty awesome. Um, today's show is BYOK, Bring Your Own Key, Taking Control of Your Data Encryption with Reltio Shield. Um, and before we do get started, by the way, this topic has been of interest to me for a little while. Um, and you know, this product's been around for a little bit of time. And I just figured we've never really talked about it. So let's talk about it. And it's about all things security. So that's pretty exciting. Keep yourself on mute. All questions should be asked in chat and or feel free to take yourself off of mute and ask. Uh, I'll make sure that Sergio, I, I will ask him those questions. As usual, the call is recorded or will be recorded and posted on the community. Please take the survey at the end of the show. Uh, it will pop up as usual. And, and know that any and all uh, requests are looked at by me uh, and, uh, and, and, and and we try to have shows based on what you want. So we, I'm not gonna say all these shows that are coming up, but there's a lot. Uh, we've got another one tomorrow uh, and a couple of next week. And then uh, two weeks later, we have a, a few more. So uh, there's a lot of really good ones that I'm excited about um, and some that I think that you guys will be uh, highly interested in as well. Go to community.relto.com and click on events, and then you can RSVP there, and or I will be sending out invites later on some of these shows if I haven't already. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Sergio, and let you kick it off, introduce yourself, and all of that stuff. Sure. Thank you. Let's see. Yep. I you see it? I do. Perfect. Yeah. So, Hello everyone. Um, let's let's start with with myself. Um, I am Sergio Abraham, originally from Argentina. I lived in the US for five years and now moved to Spain. Hopefully, this is my last country. Uh, uh, hopefully, I, I stay here for for good. Um, I run product security at, at, at Reltio. I am within the product organization uh, in charge of security compliance. Um, everything you do from user management, SSO, encryption, permissions, roles, material security, all of all of those areas uh, fall under my umbrella. Um, I have experience in security. Uh, most of my career was as a security researcher, consultant, <clears throat> doing penetration tests, like very technical security. Um, and the last few years of my career, I started to focus on, on the product side of things. I stopped breaking things and I started building things, basically. So this, this um, <clears throat> show is about Red to Shield. Um, but in order to properly understand what it does, we need to, to take a few steps back and, and go through some technical concepts. So let's talk about bring your own key and, and let's start with the basics, very basics. What, what encryption is and, and what it does. Uh, basically, all sensitive data must be encrypted in any organization, right? Regardless of size and industry. Um, in some industries and segments, uh, this is even mandatory uh, for certain types of data. Um, so the most important concept here is that in order to encrypt data, you always need a key. We can have a different, an entire show uh, talking about types of keys, encryption keys, and, and how you can manage them. That, that, that's a huge topic, but you always have a key uh, to encrypt and decrypt data. So, when we, when we get into key management, it means how you will manage that key, how you will store that key, where you, you will store that key, who can access the key. Um, the, all these topics become super important because um, as, soon as, you, as soon as you encrypt data, you can feel protected, but if your keys are available for everyone, 
it is the same as having plain text data. If anyone can decrypt, then it's it's the same. So when you when you're running your own systems or databases in within your own infrastructure, in general, you have your key with yourself. Um, some companies implement some secure storage mechanisms that the different mechanisms um, to store the keys within the organization. And, and that's uh, the most common scenario for, for on-prem systems or databases. However, when we think about the cloud, the, the data is not within the infrastructure anymore. Data goes somewhere else. Um, like like in, in, in the scenario of Red Hill, right? Um, so in this scenario, organizations do not have the control to manage how data is stored or encrypted, which is expected. Um, basically to make it easier for customers to trust cloud providers. Cloud providers issue certifications like the SOC1, SOC2 and others, basically to ensure customers that the storage and encryption is done uh, properly uh, among many other controls, right? Um, but in some cases, organizations have stricter requirements. Um, specifically, they may require that if the data is stored somewhere else, like in the cloud by another vendor, that first of all, the data must be encrypted, but then these requirements may say that the key must be uh, stored on the customer premise, not on the cloud, um, which breaks this model that you have seen here. In, in the, the traditional model, the vendor has the key. Some requirements may say that the customer must own the key. Um, and this, this simple concept becomes very complex when you try to implement this, because you will store the data in on the cloud and then you, you will have the key on on your environment and then somehow that key has to encrypt and decrypt the data on the cloud provider so in a nutshell this this is bring your own key you have use your own key to encrypt data that is stored somewhere else specifically on on the cloud um and the, the, the main advantage is that businesses can maintain control, right, over, over, over these keys. Um, and we can go into to more details. Basically, there are different benefits. Um, we can start with the, the question about who access your data. Um, and basically, uh, l l let's assume that you have a vendor like Relteo that is encrypting your data. Um, although there are strict internal policies in Relteo and in any other cloud provider, there, there are always strict internal policies to, to limit who access those keys internally within the vendor. There is always someone who can access uh, those keys, right? You, there is always some root administrator in each cloud provider who can access that key. And you also don't you also don't know how strong that key is. Like you should look at keys as as you look at your passwords. The simpler the password, the easier to crack it. The complex, the more complex it is. Uh, more secure your password will be. Same with the key. The more complex your key is, the, 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 most, the, the stronger your key is, um, the safer your data will be. So when you don't do bring your own key, you don't know how, how the, that key was generated, for example. On top of that, you can implement your own policies. For example, um, we have a lot of customers who have strict requirements about how often the keys should be rotated. 
same as your password. Your, your, your company may enforce you to, to rotate your password once every month, every three months. Same thing happens with encryption keys. Most organizations have a one year rotation policy, and that's how we implemented that ratio. But some companies may want it to be rotated once every month, every six months, every three months. Um, and in those scenarios is where bring your own key becomes super important because you can manage the rotation uh, frequency by yourself. You can also manage where and how the keys are stored. Um, by default, although your data is encrypted, you are relying on the, on the vendor about how the key is stored and where it is stored. Um, we bring your own key, you manage that. The, the vendor loses control on how the key is stored or created. Um, then you can also track who and how is this key being used. One thing is, is how it is stored and, 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 sorry, one thing is how it is stored and another thing is how it is used. Who is using the key? What, what is the key being used for? Um, you can track the, this type of, of activity when you have your own key. And, and finally, there are specific regulations that have a strong compliance requirements. Um, that indicate high levels of encryption management, right? Of key of key management. Um, and based on our experience, on our experience, there are a couple of industries um, handling sensitive data, in which a solution like being your own key is is an industry is an industry standard. <coughs> and so, sorry. So um, in healthcare, uh, we have HIPAA that requires um, health data to be encrypted. It doesn't mention where the key has to be stored, who has access to the key, but through high tech and then through just the, 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 the increase of, of, of breaches everywhere, the standards are getting higher and higher. Or basically, the interpretation of those regulations are becoming uh, more more strict. And and now we have several customers asking um, asking us to implement this 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 model of bring your own key. Same thing happens with the financial uh, financial industry. Um, PCI is is well known for for most organizations. It, Whoever is encrypting credit cards, sorry, whoever is using credit cards must encrypt them. But also, financial institutions must comply with GLBA, which also enforces like high levels uh, of encryption uh, and key management policies. Um, again, that's another industry where we have a lot of customers um, pushing for this requirement. And then traditional data privacy uh, regulations with the GDPR, CCPA, LGPD from Brazil, and then more states and countries coming where each of them have their own uh, key management requirements. In general, they are not very specific. They only tell you that you must encrypt your data and you have to protect your key. That's it. Then it's up to you how you do that. Um, but what we are seeing more and more often is that uh, the solution to, to, to this requirement is through a bring your own key solution. So what is Relative Shield? Relative Shield is basically an add-on for relative customers to enable bring your own key. So by default, all data in Relative is, is encrypted, but we own those keys. Um, you can be sure that everything is encrypted using these keys, but as I said before, customers who have stricter requirements, they want to have their own keys to encrypt data in relative. 
So some key benefits. Um, we integrate with, with right now with AWS KMS. Most of our customers are, are AWS customers. So this is very straightforward. Basically, customers are using the KMS service from AWS to create and manage these keys. And we are looking into, into, into the other cloud providers solutions as well. That's part, part of our roadmap. Right now it's only KMS, but, but the other two are, are coming as well. Um, what can you do with it? I mean, as soon as you enable it, everything goes to your side. You manage the key. You, you, you know that the key is being used to encrypt the data. You can restrict who access that key on your environment. So relative cannot access the key anymore. And then within your organization, you can define who will access the key, who can manage the key, who can change the configuration of the key, who can rotate the key, and those kind of things. And um, through other services from AWS itself, you can see who's using the key, how often, where, so you have full visibility on your encryption key. So, how, the, how does it work? And, and let's deep dive a bit on, on the technical aspects. In, for AWS customers, we use the DynamoDB database. And as you see here in, on, on the screen, you see on the right two orange boxes, one on the top, one on the bottom. And this is where the integration happens between your key and our environment. So you create your key in your account from KMS. Like as you go into AWS KMS account as usual, you create your key there within your organization. We ready to have zero visibility, zero access into that. And then you share the key with your tenant. By doing that, your tenant will switch the keys from the previous key to your key, and then everything works smoothly after that. All data becomes encrypted with your key, and not with the right to key anymore. How it is enabled? As, as you know, and if you don't know, Relio, the entire platform is, is an API first platform. So although you have a UI, you have an application uh, that you can use, everything is based on APIs. Right now, Shield is enabled through our API and all this information is in, is in our documentation, but just to Describe how easy it is. Once you created your key on your environment, you just need to send one request to, to your tenant to switch the keys and, and that's it. So let's look at them, uh, how, how it's done in real life. So let me share. We show a few videos um, <clears throat> about how to do this. So first step, which is even a step back from enabling Shield, which is on your account, on your environment. This is what Relio cannot see or, or, or access. Where basically you open the key management service from AWS, you create a new key, you define the type of key. As, as you see here, you, you start having a lot of options. Each company defines their own parameters here. You, you may want um, to use a single region, multi-region key. You, you, wanna, you may integrate um, KMS with an external key generator. That, very complex uh, settings here for each customer. And we've seen this uh, all over the place. Um, and it's up to you 
how you manage that. The Red Team has no control, and for us, it's the same. So after you define the, the basics, uh, you define an alias. For this, we recommend putting an alias that identifies the, the tenant you will encrypt with that key. Something I didn't mention is that you can have one key encrypting all your tenants, or you can have one key per tenant, or it's up to you. Again, it's the same for Rentio. Once you manage your own key, you can do whatever you want. The recommendation is to have at least one key per tenant. So then you define your own permissions, like who has access to these keys internally. And this is not on the right side. This is on your side. Who in your organization can manage this, this key? Once everything is done, there is a key policy generated here. And this key policy is what defines how this key will be used by Ratio. This is where it becomes a bit tricky, but but anyway, our documentation explains everything step by step. Sorry, and we also share templates about how to configure this key policy properly. So this is something. This is the P a PDF we are sharing with, with with customers. We are working on putting this into our our doc portal. But basically, it it gives you what you need to modify in the key policy, so it properly works with with your right to tenant. So for example, you need to define what is the relative AWS account that you get that from an API from an API as well. And we can help you through this process, of course, right? But all this information you can get by yourself. You don't need relative for this. Um, you put a tenant ID, you need a tenant ID in, in, that, in the configuration file. And then if it is a test, prod, or dev environment. So after you, you modify that key policy that defines who can access the key from where, um, you will see some relative data there. You will see that there is a relative role, a relative backup role, and this is basically the integration between your key and, and, and your tenant. So let me finish this. So after you modify the key policy, you put it back into the key MS console. Finish is created. That's it. That's how long it takes to, to create the key on, on your side. And this is a key concept here. The ARM here, this, this string that I'm highlighting here, is the unique identifier for your key. And this is unique and cannot be changed. Once it's created, this ARM will be shared with Relio for us to encrypt the data with your key. And you can switch the keys, you can rotate the keys, you can change the configuration, you can do everything you want with this key without telling Relio, because it will always work with the same ARM. The, this, this, this identifier is permanent, uh, regardless of, of the changes you do on, on, on your key. So the next one is enabling shield. So first step was creating the key entirely on your environment. Next step is basically telling Relio what key has to be used for your tenant. First of all, you, you can go into the Relio console where there is a shield tile and you will see this. <laughs> Sorry. Basically, you will say that it is disabled. This means that your data is still encrypted, but it is not using your key. 
some customers get confused uh, with this. They believe that it means that data is not encrypted. That's not the case. Data is always encrypted. But Shield as a bring your own key solution is not enabled. So, as I said earlier, everything is done through the endpoint. And the endpoint I'm using here is the same I shared in the in the deck before. You do a GET request, and you get encryption type equal default, which means it is encrypted with a rented key. And this is explained in our documentation as well. Next step, you will enable it. You execute a pull request. And you change basically the you add the body. Um, what do you need to know here? The region where your tenant is located. And this is something I, I didn't mention. It's this is an AWS restriction. Basically, your key must be generated in the same region where your tenant is host. If you're running on US West your key must be on US West. If you are running Relative on EMEA, your key must be in EMEA. There is no cross-regional uh, sharing of keys. So you, you define the, the, the region, and then you see there the new key ARM, which, as I said earlier, this is unique. You put the new key ARM here, and this is sent to right here. This takes a few seconds, but as an output, it gets back with the same key rent, which means it was enabled. After, after this, shield is enabled, and the tenant is encrypted with your key. So let me get back to the presentation. Some, some use cases here. Um, actually, there is no match because after you enable Shield, there is nothing you can do in Relative to manage the key. Everything goes to your environment. And that, that's the, 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 the beauty of it. You have full control. Everything goes back to you. And, and just by having Shield enabled, you, you will be in compliance with multiple regulations that, that require this. But there is one scenario that I would, I would like to discuss, which is, imagine there is a security breach, an attacker compromised a user that has access to the relative platform. This could happen, maybe you have a contractor or someone, uh, some unlocked laptop or phone, somewhere you have an undesired person accessing a user, and through that user is accessing Relative. So somehow you detect that and you want to pull the plug before the bridge keeps extending. Because once something happens, you don't know how large the bridge is. You don't know if, if how for how long they had access or how many users got compromised. So you need to act quickly. Um, you don't have enough time to review access reports, who, who can do what, who has access to what. You need to act now. So, and basically you, you don't have enough time to, to, to log the users. You don't know if you log some users and then there are other users that are compromised. But if you have read your shield, and now let me show you something else. Question for you, uh, and I knew this can come up. Yeah. Um, is there a timeline for enabling Shield in GCP? Um, I need to share the, the. I need to get back with the details on that. We are actively working on that. I need to check with the team. Um, I know there is a lot of work going on right now um, on enhancing GCP tenants. I need to check on 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 the specific date for for Shield. Um, okay. 
but yeah, this is I would say for GCP we come first. Yeah. GCP will come first, then Azure. Got it. And but, can yeah, I ask one more question, or do you want to wait for the yeah, next? Go ahead. Yeah. Are there any encryption solutions for data in motion available or in the queue as shield is for data at rest, correct? Or so for example, yes. if we're using like RealTQL integration hub and an external or internal queues for inbound and outbound. So for, so by default, all integrations are going through HTTPS, or actually TLS 1.2. So encryption at rest at motion should be solved with that. For SQS, I need to check. It's a different thing. I need. I need to check how how we are dealing with that. Uh, it also depends. For example, for SQS and, and S3, in terms of in motion, if everything is encrypted in motion, then at rest, if you have your own buckets, let's say we are integrating with your S3 buckets, then it's up to you on how you configure that bucket. Uh, because it's on your side, but but everything will be included in, mo in motion by default using TLS 1.2. Um, anyway, I know that there are some more complex scenarios, and I'm happy, I'm happy to, to discuss those. Right, and there's a second part to this question. Are there some options to encrypt or mask data <laughs> on UI as well? So not yet, uh, and I'm happy to get uh, feedback on that or, or additional insights. Um, I am seeing more and more customers asking for this, but in my in, in these conversations, uh, everyone understands data masking differently. Yeah. Some of them want to, some customers want to have a button to show or hide data. Others want to partially mask data. Uh, there are different, there, there are different ways to implement it. So happy to discuss um, and find the, the, the best approach, but not right now. Something that is available right now is through the major data security feature. You can hide data uh, from the UI. Uh, you can hide attributes. You can hide entity types for certain users if you want, um, but it cannot be masked at the UI yet. Okay. That's all the questions for now. Thanks, Sergio. Okay. So going back to, to, to the breach scenario where, as I said, someone gets access to, sorry, are you seeing my, my screen yet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I see so, so someone gets, gets access to, to a user on your environment, someone who has access to Red you wanna pull the plug uh, and, and basically control the breach um, as soon as possible. If you have shield, you can do this. This is a demo tenant. I have some dummy data here and shield is enabled for this tenant, right? I have access to all the data. I can do everything I want. Um, it's all good. But let's say that I am the attacker and then now I am the administrator, I can disable the key. Once the key is enabled and integrated with your tenant, you can disable the key. Of course, this is for emergency scenarios. I wouldn't recommend this as a, a common practice, but in an emergency situation, you have shield, you disable the key, and then data becomes uh, and accessible. Um, if you look into this, look how the tenant reacts. You see the total, you see there are five contacts to organizations, but you don't see them. And there was, and nothing was changed at the application layer, right? There's no permissions changed, nothing was changed, only the key was disabled. And you see errors, and the UI, you see that like data cannot be displayed or or charts cannot be generated properly. Um, so this means that even if someone got access to an account, you can prevent them uh, from seeing data. 
Once everything was solved, you enable the key again, and automatically data comes back to the tenant. This this is a a, a great scenario. Sorry, this is a bad scenario, but a, a great uh, approach to to address this 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 emergency situation. So let me go back to this, to the presentation. Um, so what happened? Red to Shield works at at the infrastructure layer. So basically, you can have proper access and segregation of duties in place. You can have great a great uh, roles model, but if something goes really bad, you can still have an an additional whip a, a bullet right and use shield to to cut the access like entirely. Um, and after the bridge is controlled, you can re-enable the key and then continue operating as usual. Again, we are talking about worst case scenarios, but we see more and more cases like that happening at organizations publicly. Hey, Sergio, can I ask a question? Um, yes. So Kevin mentions that, uh, you know, and he wants to confirm that we're getting ready to go live in a few months, and his understanding is that Data Shield is active on day one and protecting the data, or RELTIO is managing the keys for us. Or is there some action that we need to uh, take to initiate by their team with RELTIO? The topic here was just whether the key should be managed by the customer or not. Okay, I'm trying, I'm trying to I'm, I'm reading the question again. Um, uh, Basically, data is encrypted on day one. That, that's for sure. Day one, you enable, you implement Reltio, and by default, everything is encrypted. But we have those keys, unless you manually enable Shield. First of all, you have to have Shield enable the, 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 the Shield add-on, and then you have to enable it. So there is a, a manual step that has to be executed on your side. To, to basically shift the control of the keys from Relio to you. It is not done automatically, basically. Kevin, does that answer your question? Just want to make sure that you're clear. Yeah, yeah, uh, Chris, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Sergio, yeah. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't something we needed to do. So I think we're okay. Yeah. with you all managing the keys for us. I don't I don't think the, it could be a topic in the future where maybe it shifts to us, but I just wanted to make sure there was not something that we need to do somewhere within the configuration or some verbal request we need to make of Reltio to make sure the data was encrypted with the shield. It sounds like by default, it's already in place. Yeah, uh, all Reltio data is encrypted uh, at rest and in transit by default. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. No act required. Uh, everything's encrypted. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No worries. And and there is another question, Sergio. And uh, is there an additional cost to enable Reltio Shield? Yes. So basically, um, Reltio Shield you can see it as a different product or as an add-on to to your current tenants. Uh, I don't have the details uh, about pricing. Uh, you should talk to your TAM or or a con executive uh, CSM or TAM or yeah, AE, yeah. you know. And if you don't know who that is, just shoot me an email and I'll get shoot to the right person. Yeah, but 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 yeah, it is it's a separate add-on for 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 the customer. So some best practices, um, of course, implement Shield in your development and test them first before getting into production. Um, you should define whether it's if, if you have Shield and what, before getting into production, you should define whether you want to encrypt both your main storage and your backups with the same key or use different keys. And we have customers doing both. Remember that for your production tenants, we also have backups. Um, backups have your data as well. So there are two places where your data is stored and encrypted. Um, but if you want to use your own key, you need to define whether we are going to use the same key for both 
main storage and backups or two different keys. Um, you should also decide whether you use single region keys or multi region keys. Um, because if you, if in the future, uh, disaster recovery is enabled, uh, multi regional keys become um, essential uh, to make it work. So there are some details there. Basically, in order to reduce problems in the long term and make sure that, that you that you make the right choices. Um, and just one important comment, if you enable shield by yourself, which is possible, um, we still need to a support case to be raised before enabling it in production. So you can do it by yourself in, de in development and test, but production requires some additional steps on our backend. And it's very important to, to stay aligned again. You can still do it by yourself, but it's better if we do it aligned together because we need to do some steps on, on the back end as soon as you enable it. Finally, um, so I think that the, the benefits are, are quite clear. Um, you basically increase the, the level of, your, of, the, of control of your data. Um, which is a sensitive, a sensitive topic when talking about cloud solutions, right? Who owns the data? Where is the data? So when once you once your data is stored somewhere else, having your own key um, will will reduce uh, that pain for sure. Um, on the other side, on, on the compliance side, it's it will make it very easy for you to to answer questions for auditors or 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 the people who are certifying you against specific uh, standards um, and finally just to to ensure everyone that Red shield works disruption free so you don't even realize that something happened that it was that basically keys were were shifted um it, it takes really two, three seconds for us to, to do the switch. So there is no performance or availability um, issues with Red with Shield at all. Additional resources for everyone, um, community, you know, support portal, of course, and, and the documentation portal. And if you don't find it, you can always uh, ask me. Uh, I am the guy who can help you. Ask the question on community as well. Sergio yes. really does help out a lot. Um, there's one question. Um, how can you identify if we are at a breach specific to RELTO and what all data already downloaded by the attacker? So I'm not sure. Great question. Uh, basically, so we we read your, well, we have our own um information security team uh, working on this, right? We are 24 seven monitoring everything, um, trying to find like um, strength behavior, you know? Uh, we have logs from everything, so we may be able to, to find it, but if it is a regular user, it may be hard for us, and it may be more on your side to determine who, who did it? Like, let's say it was a, an employee, an employee who, who is mad at, at his manager or whatever. And, and then we read here, we cannot predict if that employee is doing it from, like for good reasons or bad reasons. It, it's very hard for us to know that. So um, you should have a specific procedures on your side to, 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 to detect that. We have the, the, the activity log, we have a lot of customers consuming the activity log feature to, to monitor that. For example, you, you can see who is uh, reading which data or modifying which attribute, when, how often you have that data available in Retio. And probably I would recommend consuming the activity, the Retio activity log through the API and pushing those logs somewhere else where you can monitor uh, what's going on. 
Great. How long uh, until the encryption uh, is effectively updated with the new key? Three, four seconds, max. It's very quick. Wow. And you know, does Realtio um, alert clients to any suspicion <clears throat> activity by users? Yeah. Like so if, if, yeah. yeah. So if, if we detect something, we immediately uh, alert customers. We 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 had scenarios in the past where that happened, where we we saw strange behavior, and like one time was like a contractor doing so. And it was not something bad, but it was something that shouldn't have happened in that customer, and we we found it. So. Yes, we do best we can, but as I said earlier, there may be specific, very specific behaviors that we may not see as suspicious. Yeah, and, you know, look, we have a chief security officer, and he has a team, and 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 uh, they look at all that kind of stuff. So certainly, if there was some kind of issue, you'd be alerted for sure. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Any other thoughts, Sergio? No, um, just ask me, ask, ask in the community if you have additional questions, or ask, ask uh, through, through, through our support team. Um, if, you, if you are not um, in the area, in your organization, so if, if, if you are not the person who usually takes care of this, who, who is responsible for encryption keys, I would try to find the right person and ask, and ask uh, whether you would need something like this or not. Um, in general, the security team is involved at the surface level with, with when analyzing Retio. And sometimes we I've seen miscommunication happening between different teams and then maybe the company needed shield and they didn't know it, it was there, or they didn't know maybe the the Reltio implementation person was not security minded and he or she was not thinking about this. So it's I, I basically I would recommend talking to your security team and saying, hey, we are using Reltio and we are storing this type of data in Reltio. Mm -hmm. The data is encrypted. Who has to manage the key? Can we delegate? that to Reltio, or should we manage the encryption key for the data we store in Reltio? That That's a question that all customers should ask to the security teams, and based on that, define if you would need Shield or not. Great. Well, there are no other questions. So everyone, thank you so much for attending today's session uh, on BYOK, bring your own key. <laughs> so I love it, that was really awesome. Um, and uh, if you have any specific questions, one, you know, feel free to post that on community. And if you want to enable that, talk to your CSM uh, AE or shoot me a note to, uh, if you don't know who that is. Um, but uh, until tomorrow, we do have another show going on tomorrow, if you can make it.